Now, mind you, this is just some of the things that happened to be here on the farm. We moved up to Idaho from Utah. We had a five acre farm in Utah and we loved it. But we also knew that we wanted more land. Whew. It's nice and hot, hot soapy water. I'm gonna squeeze this out. <coughs> Wash her udder here. My hands are all nice and dry and cracked from all the hot water. Um, I'll explain a little what I'm doing. This is a Dexter cow. Sorry, I'm going to jump around a little bit. This is a Dexter cow, and she will give about a gallon a day. Now, when we got her, she was not handled. She's been with us for a year plus. Uh, we got her pregnant. It took a while to AI her, and uh, <coughs> we did, and it didn't take, and it didn't take. Finally, it took. She lost her calf about three weeks ago or so, and it was her first time. She was not uh, wanting to be milked, and it was all new and different and fresh and tender. So uh, we had to really strap her down in order to get to milk her. And now you can see uh, I come up just fine. Now what I've done in the beginning is I've washed her. There's a lot of different people with different protocols to how they want to wash. For me, you can see that steam coming up. Hot soapy water for me is just fine. I don't reuse the rag. Um, I still keep my little bucket of water. I don't put the dirty rag back in it in case I needed to, you know, wash something else. You know, there's a time when uh, the cow stepped in the bucket and was able to use that hot water to wash it out. So I strip a little bit out of the teeth at first to get it going. And then also um, just any bacteria that's in the, the bottom of the teat. <coughs> um, hers are awesome. I've had, um, and I don't always, just because of the angle and stuff of my hands, I don't always just do the same teats and do them all the way. I jump around, and I think it helps her. I usually also have some music going. My sister gave me a hat with, uh, what do you call it, earphones in it. That was great, but then I can't hear ambient noise, so it's better to have lots of ambient noise, and it kind of desensitizes them to being used to people and animals and noise. A lot of people, when you think of milking a cow, you're thinking of like, oh, you're pulling, pull, pull. And I've had to do it where you're taking it and just stripping it down like that, okay? I've had some that are so tiny that even my, t I have tiny hands. Even my tiny hands can't do it. But when you're milking, ideally, cow or goat, Goats usually have more of a triangular bag, a lot like a pastry bag, um, and typically, depending on the breed of goat, Nigerian dwarfs not so much, but they have great cream content, um, you're just doing it like a pastry bag. So what you're doing is just taking your hand like this, put your, put the teat up on the crook of your fingers like that, and you're just squeezing down. Can you see that well enough on there? Okay, you don't need to be pulling down. It's just enough pressure to get it to come out. Um, any of you mamas that have had a baby know that you can have letdowns. So it helps when I was washing her, I will kind of play around with her udder, blah, 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 and that kind of simulates baby kind of nuzzling and <laughs> Okay, that helps have a natural response of a letdown. Having a bigger bucket is helpful. But while I was first getting going, I would seriously just hold uh, an insulated cup up like that and just milk into the cup. And then that way, if she started to kick, you can you can feel, get to the point where you feel your animal and you can feel how tense they are or how comfortable. If they're starting to not get them as comfortable or if they're out of food, they'll start kind of dancing a little bit. And then you can always just whoop, grab your bucket. Okay. Um... It's interesting to see on her, this is a Dexter. And sitting here on a milk crate, I'm five foot three. Her head is <laughs> up to here on me. So standing, she's not even, her back is like up to my boot. I should measure her, but I mean, it's probably like something like 42 inches. It's not very tall. So the nice thing about Dexters is they make a really good family milk cow. She's a third of the size of a Holstein. And so therefore I don't have to 
uh, have all the feed of a Holstein. Um, typically, Dexters are more predominantly A2A2 as opposed to other uh, breeds of cows. Jerseys and Dexters. I also have a Jersey cow that I milk. Um, and it's just nice to have a smaller animal. You just feel a little, I feel a little more comfortable around them, even though I feel very comfortable around cows um, and kids. Uh, if you are, my thighs are bigger, you know, think about it, she's a shorter cow, so you are bending over a little bit more. You know, my hubby has to haunch over, or you can fix that with a stanchion that's on more of a platform. So that's a possibility too. Um, but a gallon a day with amazing cream, that's still plenty for even a large family, and you still have some for drinking copious amounts, and good cream for butter, and ice cream, and sour cream, and all those things. So, um, we do a mix of alfalfa. Sometimes your hands get tired, especially when it's cold in the barn. Your hands need to kind of warm up a little bit, or give them a different angle. Um, we do a mixture of sweet feed, alfalfa, and um, we're trying some, I believe it's oat hay from the local neighbors. We hope to plant our fields this year and we'll keep the cows off of them in what we call a pasture mix and for dry areas because it's really expensive to water our fields. We have an almost 70 acre farm uh, near Pocatello of Southeast Idaho. We're about a zone four or five and we can pump our water right out of the river, but we also have to have the energy to do that. Diesel is through the roof. <sighs> so one field, we have a diesel uh, pump. The others, we have electric pumps uh, that we worked on last year. So hopefully we'll be able to water those. And some of our fields, we have to go over a bridge um, to access them. So the goal is to be that much more self-sufficient. We want to be able to have enough on our land to be able to feed the animals that we need to provide for our family and some neighbors um, and then be able to sell the excess because um, it's good to be able to not just produce just enough or also not have to overgraze it so what we want to do is plant it grow it cut it do one cutting and have enough from that one cutting to get us through the winter with animals that we have. And then we will sell off, we'll store and or sell off the excess. So once we get a hay barn built, this is a nice barn and there is a hay loft up there, but not enough to store what we need for even our, let's see, we have five Dexter mamas and a Jersey, six, six Dexter mamas, five, six, seven, seven. We have <laughs> I'm a 10 cow wife. <laughs> so that's some of the goals. Um, something you'll notice with your milk. I'm milking into a white bucket here. And usually about halfway through just to give my hands a break. And just in case something gets kicked over and I don't want to lose the milk. I will take and uh, I've got my little milk bucket here. I will take this and pour it into here so that cats or any other animals don't get it. This is a good time if she has run out of like sweet feed, for example, then I'm going to give her some alfalfa to eat in there. We don't feed them only exclusively in here, um, but it helps. Um, like I said, she was very wild and is now very tame. Um, but you'll notice like on the second half of the bucket, it starts to turn more yellow. And you're like, hmm, oh, what's that? Is it still colostrum? No, not colostrum. Um, your thicker and more creamy milk will be like the latter half of your milk. That's also why it's important to get them milked out all the way because that's where the cream is. And you can seriously see it. It's, I'm so in love with how much cream she has. You'll be like getting the last little bits out and you can do little things kind of like bump them can you know smack their teats around a little bit but I have not found that like smacking their teats really with them or goats really helps move anything down um moving it like that or kind of massaging the udder probably helps even more oh I've been neglecting that one now these ones are far emptier than that one's about. it's still full how long does it take to milk this cow 
good question. I, I, I need to actually probably time it. But, um, all in all, I'm probably gone like 15 minutes. It's cold here. I just shut the door because it's got a good wind, but I'm thankful for this barn. And more and more, I'm bringing baby with me outside. And it's not like baby can't be outside, it's just, uh, I haven't yet. My baby's four months old, and my kids are out of school, and they like to come help and play around and do shenanigans in the barn. Um, but a good 15 minutes. Now, I have pretty strong hands. I have been consistently milking an animal for a couple of years. Sometimes I have small breaks. Like, I stopped milking my goats, I think, in October. I was still milking when I had my baby on Labor Day. Um, so I was still milking two a day. So you have to think about a cow is usually a lot more milk. Yes and no, I'm only getting a gallon from her, whereas I was getting sometimes a gallon a day from each goat. Um, but she has four teats instead of two. So, I like milking both. I love goat's milk, but I like cow's milk because I can do more with it. Except that we were gifted a beautiful gift of a Slavic Beauty cream separator. I'm really excited to show that to you here uh, this weekend. I've been using and giving away milk and using the cream and stuff like that, so I haven't gotten uh, it out crazy enough to play with it yet. Um, but we hope to this weekend as I save up a few gallons of milk because, oh man, cream. Oh, I've been having fun with butter, but to have cream for coffee. I haven't even had my coffee yet today. Imagine that. I'm just always as perky. Um, coffee, ice cream. Can you see she's starting to, she was kind of like toddling back and forth a little bit. So she's just, she's just adjusting. And she's kind of like on her tippy toes right at the front here. You can see they've made like where they put their feet, like a little hole. So I need to fill that in. And then cows tend to poop and pee <laughs> when they're uh, being milked because they relax and their uh, their systems are moving, so they poop and pee. So it is a little muddier and wetter back there, and it's created a little bit of a pit, so I need to go fill that in. And we have big plans for more drainage, uh, and there's a lot of stuff as they've made it muddy in here it's kind of nice because then i can shovel it out because there's many many years of it not being shoveled in here so i have probably a good eight inches of stuff the entire barn that i still need to dig down and get that's okay because sometimes you'll notice like with with uh your teeth you'll have kind of like squirrely teeth if that makes sense so they'll be pointed different ways and they will be a certain hand like maybe it works a lot better from the other side of the cow, just the way that your hand is angled, um, that's going to be able to milk that a lot better. That's why it's also nice to go to music, because when I have music, then I get like a tune going and I, I find I milk better. Maybe, maybe it's just me. <laughs> 